Hey, thanks for stopping by my channel. So in this video, we're gonna cover server-side request forgery and what it looks like to submit a proof of concept to a bug bounty program. So I'm currently working on an intermediate to advanced level bug bounty course to put out here on my YouTube channel, but I've had quite a few questions about server-side request forgery. Some of you were kind of confused on exactly how it works and what is going on. So the purpose of this video is to show you what is going on inside of server-side request forgery and walk through a couple of examples so maybe you can understand what is happening. I wasn't originally gonna put any of this content out until I had put out the complete intermediate to advanced bug bounty course, but due to some of the requests, we're gonna go ahead and talk about it now and then it will make more sense later when you get the full course out in the next few weeks or possibly a month out depending on how much information I pack into it. So the way we're gonna go about this is I'm gonna show you a flowchart and the flowchart might not make a whole lot of sense in the beginning, but I wanna show it to you so that way you kinda of see what is happening. And then we're gonna walk through two different examples and then come back to the flowchart. And at that point, the server side request forgery should make a lot of sense to you. And you should be able to start looking for these bugs as you are browsing through programs and you'll be able to submit a proof of concept that makes sense to the person who receives your bug report. With that, let's jump into it. Or with a very simple, basic flowchart. I tried to make it as simple as possible so that you guys could understand exactly what's going on and that it wouldn't be too busy with too much going on. So this would be us, the user, and you can also change this to the hacker or the attacker. And so the attacker sends a URL request to the website. So we're manipulating the URL and then the website makes this request that you weren't supposed to be able to make to the server. And then the server sends the data back to the website and then you can view it as the attacker. So this is how the flow works. If you were just a regular user, we would just have user here and you'd send a request and it's just as any request that's going to the website and the website would pull the information from the server and the, the data would be sent back to the website and you would see the request that the website made to the server. The problem with a server side request forgery comes in when you have the ability to manipulate this URL request. So let's say it's the URL wants to reach back to the home or root directory and you're able to grab a file off of the server instead of the actual directory right here. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and move into an example. So we are going to be using this example from Love on Hack the Box. I'm not gonna walk through all of the recon and what gets you to this point, but rather just what is going on with the URL. So in here, we have the web application that's gonna reach out to the server through this URL form right here. And if you're ever doing a CTF or any kind of certification and you see something like this, this is a dead giveaway that there is a server side request forgery anytime you see a URL right here but most of the time the URL is going to look like this up here and you're going to have something like this and then it will pass in a parameter like a URL equals and then it'll have a file right here such as the root directory or some kind of file so we could just put in here some file and then what you would do is you would manipulate this right here and you could pull down files a different way but instead of having it right here inside of the url this web application has it right here and because this is an easy box on hack the box that's probably the reason they put the url request down here in a submit format instead of being in the url and you have to deal with it inside of burp so this is how you're normally going to see it it'll be up here in the url something like this and in the next example we're going to see it's also not going to be up here but it's going to submit a url request and we'll be able to see it in burp and we'll be able to manipulate it just like we would up here only we're going to do it in burp so inside of this file scanner right here on this hack the box if you ever want to test a server-side request forgery it's pretty simple you can just come over here to a terminal and you can set up a netcat listener on port 80 and it needs to be on port 80 because it's going to have to go through the http protocol over here you would just type in something like http right here this is my vpn with hack the box and so we can hit scan file it's going to hang for a second we can cancel it or you can just come over here and cancel out of this you can see that it reached out to my little netcat listener here on port 80 and so we know that this is trying to grab a url and you can check to see if it's grabbing a file from the server by typing in the actual ip address so in this case for this hack the box the ip address is http slash slash and it's 1010 
10 to 39, just like this. And if we scan this, it's actually gonna bring back the web page right here. So if we went to this IP address right here, we said HTTP, and then we said 10, 10, 10, 239, and then we come here, you'll see this voting system right here. This is also on this server. So I actually had to add this to the Etsy host file. And if you're not familiar with that, what that is, that's okay. So because we're able to pull down this voting system by pointing this machine to itself, we know that we are able to pull information from the server. And I wanna show you why this is so bad. And it's such a detrimental vulnerability because if I were to come in here and we scanned and we searched through all of these files like you would in order to get remote code execution on this box. You can grab files off of this server. And in the case of this specific box on Hack the Box, you're able to grab a password file. So you would have to go through and scan the network. But just to show you, we're not going to do that. We can grab, so this is the local host and it's on port 5000 and we can hit scan file. I was missing this dot here. We can hit scan file and it's going to pull this information from the server and it's going to tell us that you have the credentials for admin right here. So this would probably be the admin and then, then you have the password right here. So this is why server side request forgery is so bad is you can pull information that you shouldn't be able to access from the file. So we're going to move on to a port swigger right here and they have a basic SSRF against a local server. It's going to tell us to solve this lab. We're going to change the URL access of the admin interface at this location and we're gonna delete this user right here. So let's open up the lab. And the way we're gonna go about solving this is I forgot where it told us this is located. I think it said inside of a check the stock feature. So if you come over here and we open up burp, we can turn, actually we need to be inside here. Now we can turn intercept on and we can check the stock and we'll send this to repeater and then we can just turn this off. Okay, before we change any of this, we're going to send this to repeater so you can see what we get back. This is the normal request. This is what we get back. We get back a response of okay. But if we just delete this whole thing right here and we paste in the local host and then we go to the admin and we send this, we're gonna get back a different page and we're actually told that we've reached the basic SRS SSRF against the local server. And I think we're supposed to actually delete the user Carlos right here. And so the way we would go about doing this, actually before we delete him, I wanna try something just because I just showed it. We can go 127.0.0.1 and this should send us to the local host as well. See if we get back the same thing and we did. So this is what we would do is you can type in localhost right here or 127.0.0.1 and then we're on the admin page. Now what we need to do is delete the user Carlos and I'm guessing this is supposed to be done from the admin panel. I suppose you could read through here and maybe it might tell us what we can do from the admin panel. Oh, it tells us right here. It says we need to delete the user Carlos. So you could actually just copy this right here. Look, it says we can delete these users. It actually tells us we can delete a bunch of users and we can paste this in here. Um, we got too many admins going on. We can delete that all the way back. Now, if we hit delete, this right here should pop up to solved. So if we send this, it tells us not found. I think we have to follow the redirect. Turn the proxy off. And it tells us that we have deleted the user Carlos. So this is how a server side request forgery works. And I wanna walk you through this one more time. So now I wanna bring you back to this flow chart right here. And now you understand that what we're doing when we, we are the user and we make a request through the URL, through something like this, and let's say we want to get a file, you would do this right here. And if you were on a Linux machine, it would look something like this and you could try and pull down the Etsy passwd file. Actually, I'm not sure if there's supposed to be a colon there or not. So you can Google and check that, I can't remember. 
but it would be something like this to pull down the Etsy passwd file. And on Windows, you're gonna be trying to pull down some kind of Windows system file that would just be on the server to see if you can get files, but you wouldn't do this necessarily in a proof of concept. What you're gonna do is like I showed over here with opening up a Netcat listener and then making a request to the URL, which is gonna be your own IP address right here to see if you get a connection back. A quick tip to see if you're trying to figure out what the server is, if it's Linux or Windows and you wanna know what kind of file to look for, you can actually just ping the server and see the hack the box is a Windows server and it's 239. Whenever you see this TTL of a 127 or a 128 or something in the 120s, it's going to be a Windows server. And when you ping a Linux server, it's going to be somewhere in like the 65 range. And that's one way to tell what kind of server you're going up against. You can just really simply ping it or you can run an in-map scan and it will tell you. But this is server-side request forgery in a nutshell. You're going to make a you're the user and you make a request through the URL to the website and then the website requests the URL from the server and the server sends the data back to the website and then you're able to view it as the user and if you are able to manipulate the URL request to the server you can grab files from the server that you shouldn't be able to access. Okay, so that was server-side request forgery in a nutshell. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below, and I'll try to get those answered when I put out my full bug bounty hunting course from intermediate to advanced level. And if there's anything else you'd like to see in that course, I'm working on it right now, so let me know, and I'll try and get that thrown into it, so that way it all makes sense as you're working through your bug bounty journey from a beginner to an advanced hunter. Thanks for watching.